This is Algebra 1, Term 6, Lesson 7. This is the last lesson in the course, Making Sense of Data. We'll begin with a Desmos activity, which is a slow reveal of some historical data. We'll then review our privacy, watching a video and reading an article, and then we'll finish up with causation is not implied by correlation, an Ed Puzzle activity. Let's start with Desmos. Just like the last Desmos activity, we are going to have some categorical data, and it is like a slow reveal that uh, students are going to basically play with the data, and then they'll learn what it's actually about, and then they'll play with it some more. So just like last time, I will not be able to show you all the screens in this activity because I don't want to reveal what the data is about. For this activity, students will be looking at an historical document and they will be watching a YouTube clip of a popular movie that addresses the cultural significance of the data. So you may want to plan on uh, have that set up ahead of time. So let's go to screen one. The first thing they're going to do is answer these questions. What do you notice? What do you wonder? And who or what could this data represent? So they're just making a guess at this point. Next. Unlike last time, they gave the totals in the columns, we're going to create our own totals. So they'll total up the registered and the not registered, and they'll total up population A and population B. And then they will write some text or type some text in the box describing what do these totals reveal about this data. So something they may notice once they put in their totals. Now using the data that's given in the table, so if they haven't already checked their totals, now they can do that. Uh, they're going to compute relative frequencies. Now remember, to do the rows, they're going to take uh, the population and divide by the total for that population. And conveniently, they've put the total for that population here in the table. So that's actually what they're dividing by for each of the cells in that row. Don't forget there is a calculator button. They can use that or they can just type directly into the cell of the calculator to get the ratio. Now they're going to repeat the process using the columns. So they're telling you the number to divide by in the parentheses in each column. And then these are some statements about the data. So settle a dispute. Who do you agree with? And so Kevin makes a statement. Steph makes a statement. Are they both correct or neither correct? So they'll choose one of those answers. And then when we get to screen six, uh, we're not going to go any further than this, but it does give them the percentages. So if they wrote decimals on the previous screens or just put ratios, you might want to discuss how to convert those to percentages if kids are having any issue understanding these numbers. Uh, but from here on, it's going to reveal the context of the data, and it's also going to give them some detail. Uh, at the end, they're going to explore another document related to this data and answer some questions about that. So to kind of further put this in context and appreciate uh, what's going on. At this point, you would show the video. There is a link in the teacher moves and it's also in the show uh, description at the beginning. So you should have that queued up and ready and they'll watch the video to get the context of the data and then they'll answer the remaining questions. So there are four slides remaining this activity should take you, I would say, it could take a while depending on how comfortable your kids are calculating and getting these percentages and making sense of them in context. So let's return two slides. So the next part of this assignment is to review privacy issues. So they're going to watch a privacy project video. Uh, it does have some bleeped out profanity. There is no profanity that they hear, but they can probably figure out the profanity that's being used. If that is pro a problem for you, you could maybe take the transcript of the video and just give them that and take out that bleeped part. Uh, then they're going to review an article, how many dangerous permissions are too many. And this article is pretty lengthy. I would say it's going to take them a while to read it. Now this is for specifically Android devices, um, but honestly it doesn't really matter. I think these apps are pretty much available on both Apple and Android devices. But they go on down, and it's a very long article, but there's lots of tables, uh, lots of bar graphs. So they can go through and look at those and look at the popular Android apps and the permissions for those Android apps. 
So when you watch the video, you'll actually see some of these things that are listed here mentioned in the video. So that that's really makes this a little more interesting, I think, to the kids to actually hear the video and then watch this. Some of these apps they may not use, like WhatsApp and WhatsApp Business. You know, I don't know that our kids would use that, but Google Chrome, we all use that, or at least we do, because we were using Chromebooks, and then Snapchat's pretty popular. Telegram is a UK site, so I don't know that our kids would care about that, but most of our kids know about these apps, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Facebook Lite. And then gaming. So for kids that care about games, there's a whole list of games down here at the bottom. And these are the app's permissions. Uh, it'd be interesting to talk about which ones have the fewest permissions and which ones have the most. And then Netflix, a lot of kids use that. Uh, YouTube, a lot of kids use that. Google Maps. Now once they've reviewed their article, they might read it silently and then discuss it as a team. These are the four questions they will answer first. What permissions did you hear about in the video that concerned you? Uh, two, what is one thing you read in the article that you found interesting or disturbing? So they could just pick one thing to note. And then do you believe there should be additional limits placed on apps and permissions to protect your privacy? And what are your thoughts about privacy permissions for phone apps just overall? Just any general thought they can add. Now here's where you'll make a decision as a teacher. How do you want these teams to present their thinking to the class? Uh, here it says discuss the ideas as a team. Decide on two to three specific ideas to share with the class and your teacher will give you further instructions. So they could do a written presentation, maybe in a, make their own Google Slides, or they could stand up in front of the class and speak. They could make a video. They could do a skit, make a poster. So, I mean, it's really up to you and how much time you want to spend on this. I would say this is an important topic. And most students, most adults, don't really think about their privacy when they're choosing apps for their phone. And so this would be a good time to have that discussion and something they can carry with them moving forward out of your class. Now, the last task of the day is an Ed Puzzle. And so the Ed Puzzle is about correlation versus causation. So in this video, they're looking at four different ways that people relate correlation and causation erroneously. Uh, the post hoc fallacy, a directional problem, a third or confounding variable, and then confirmation bias. And he gives examples of each. There are multiple choice questions that are uh, that connect to all four of those and one additional question. So the students will answer those questions as they move through the video. This takes about eight minutes, it's pretty quick. He does an excellent job kind of explaining why people jump to the wrong conclusions uh, when they're presented with information. So the point of this exercise is for students to understand that just because they see something happening or somebody saying something, they should question the validity of their statements. And that's what we want our critical thinkers. We go back to those four C's of learning that I discussed in the very first term of the school year. So if you've not reviewed that video, uh, I would encourage you to do that. Now is the time that students will be putting together their final presentations for the class. Uh, so student portfolios will be submitted at about this time. Uh, and some students may choose to create a video. Some people may want to stand up and speak to the class. There's just lots of ways they could do it. I even had them use Google Sites one time to put their portfolios. So however you want to do it as a teacher, I like to, I like Google Slides because I can actually use those and embed them on my site, which you will see are on the Technomath site if you've never noticed. Go take a look at the couple that I've posted. Um, but it's really any way that you want them to present their final portfolio is fine and discuss what they've learned this year. This is a fun time of year because they're done. State test's over. Final exam is next class period. Uh, it's going to be a quick test. It's going to be an easy test. I try to make it as simple as I possibly can because I don't want to stress kids out at the very end of school. So hopefully you'll enjoy that test. Uh, and this concludes this course. So if there's anything you need in addition to what you're already getting with this course, let me know. I'll see what I can do. Y'all have 
a great summer.